Okay, we're going to talk about CTEU EP using a CAPC splitter and we're going to be going to a VAEM adapter on these modules. So the VAEM24 does up to six bytes of data. Okay, and once we've connected power to the CTEU and we have that connected to the splitter and the wiring is connected and we change the IP address of the CTU, we log into the CTU, and this is what we're going to look like here. Okay? The reason this looks like this is because we've set the DIL switches. The DIL switches are right here on the face of the module, and all the top DIL2 switches are off to the right and these two right here are on the left which is part of the IP address setting. In my case I just did DHCP and assigned it over the software <clears throat> but that's the gist of it. So I actually have status or diagnostic status off and I can still achieve diagnostic status in my configuration this switch here is only used when you want the diagnostic status to be part of the process data. And when you turn the switch on, the process data, the first two bytes are the process data for the X1 and X2 ports, because there's two ports on this, X1, X2, um, which is from the splitter. So that's how that works. But we're not using that here because we can get the status or the diagnostic status anyway. Next thing is the wiring is done like this to the port that's on the CTU EP. And let's talk about assembly process data rules, okay? So when we go to configure either a EDS file in the PLC or a generic module, whichever we prefer, uh, there's some rules here for the CTEU. Um, when we're using assembly instances 101 and 100, then we have, just to zoom in here, this is when we have to specify the exact data size. So on the right hand side here, let's say I have only what I've shown already in the configuration, six output bytes for each manifold. That would be 12 output bytes and at the same time, we have zero inputs. So if we turn the, if we were to configure this and Rock would, would let us put a zero input size, then this would be zero instead of two here and 12 bytes of data for output. In this case, Rock will just let us put that there. So we are going to turn the DIL switch on, which we just discussed, and we would then have two bytes of input data, and we would have the configuration of two input bytes and 12 output bytes. Not like what we're showing here, but I'm just talking about the example. The next pink area here, uh, we call it in the EDS file, they call it IO connection single port or dual port, and they specify 163264. Um, with the generic module, you can actually specify the size, unlike this over here, it's, it's being specified by the selection of that. You can't modify that. So there are some restrictions with the EDS file, meaning that I can't use the DIL switch 2.5 on because 
that would mean instead of 16 input data, I would need to specify 18, and I cannot do that here, okay? Only using the generic can I specify and use that DIL 2.5 on, okay? So the fixed assembly lights, lengths are these IO config single port or dual port, and what that does is it allocates and reserves the space up to 16 bytes, up to 32 bytes, up to 64. And if you decide to change your your data type, so for example, over here, before you start to change anything in, in this here, if you want to use double integer, then these values here would be cut in half, uh, which is what the note is here. So if you're using integer, instead of it being 16 and 16, it would be eight and eight. Um, so right here, 121, so that's that. So, and then if we want a status as a separate connection down here, we'd have to select separate connection here and we would get our status. <clears throat> okay. What else? Um, and when all's done and said, in this particular application, I'm using dual port, so I'm allocating 16 input bytes, 16 output. Of course, like I told you, I only have valves connected here, which have no inputs on them. So the inputs will be not used for anything at all. Um, if I was to specify well, that's not going to even do it. I'm simply using the uh, the diagnostics two here, which is the orange. That's the status right there. You see, there's X one status and there's X two status. So, therefore, I have sixteen outputs, and I would have sixteen inputs as well. <clears throat> okay, let's get into this here. This case here, I'm using the latest 2.50 firmware. This is my CTUEP. Address 112. And I don't need that anymore now. We go back to this. There's like diagnostics information. Our firmware information. Hmm. Okay. And yeah, I have a PTL here, but I didn't have a PT. The same thing. Um, so there you go. So, okay, from a logic standpoint, if we go here, I'm using this L71 PLC here. And this. Card right here, which has 1103 firmware in it. The CTU we have here. It's version 5, or Rev 5, so it's 2.005. And in the logics environment, as I show in the other screen there, I've added this generic, not the generic, I've added, inst I've installed the EDS file, okay? So, you know, EDS installation file, I downloaded the EDS file from the website for that firmware, and then I installed it here. Then when I go to, say, new module, and I type in CTEU, then this, comes up, say create. You immediately want to change because there's some rock wall bugs. So if you don't change the data and do some things and come back and change it after, then the data is not represented right and you'll have errors. So I'm just representing the 205. This is where we drop down. You're going to either pick this or this. I'll just keep going through them here. So I could put 64, but in this case, I'll pick the, the dual ports, but 
16 bytes per port. And then I want some diagnostics data, which automatically adds two inputs. And then we keep going. You say yes. It modifies this area right here to this. And then you keep going. So at this point, I'm going to hit cancel, close. And then when we get to the point where I'm right here, as I showed before, we already had this same setup here, five. And as I've already said, when you're using IO single port or IO connection dual port with whatever the number is, these are fixed assembly lengths, meaning they reserve space based upon what data size you've specified. That's all there is to this connection here. And then when you get to the connection, I've labeled this myself so that you can see where the data resides here. And there is the I2, which is the diagnostics here. So if we were to go into there, so there's the I2 right there. And This is where the data lies. Again, I, I labeled this. The user manual find that you know if these bits are on, this is what they mean under voltage power load, so on and so forth. And then we have our process data. So if I put these valves on right here, then the coils will turn on. And that's basically it for setting up your valves and everything like this. Um, again, keep in mind here that if I was to actually turn on the the dill switch setting here, if I was to turn this on, the diagnostic status, then that's going to add the, where is it here? You would now have an input image here, and it would be part of the process data. And at that point, you would not be able to configure the Rockwell to be compatible with that because when you're using the EDS file, it's stuck on selecting what 1632 or 64. I would have to be able to modify the 16 to an 18 to allow that and I cannot due to the style of the EDS file. Only in a generic EDS file can you modify that. Okay, and that's it. Nothing else.